Hey, this is Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting dot com, and today I want to share some news, and that is that Spreaker, which is a live platform for broadcasting and podcasting, it's the only place as of as I record this as of January two thousand fourteen that you can get on iHeart Radio, and it used to be that you would say, well, who cares because you know you can't see if anybody's listening. Now you can. You can see here that this particular episode, I'm going to use this one because this is the one that's been heard the most on iHeartRadio. You can see most of these are five and seven. So it's not a huge audience yet, but you can see, is anyone listening? So I looked at this and I saw, if I go into this, I can look at the stats and I can see how many were from Spreaker and how many were from iHeartRadio. And I can see here, if I go into listenings, how many of them were downloaded, how many of them were live, and also then how were people consuming Spreaker. So let's look at this a little bit. Here are the stats for that. 61 plays, 3 were live, 40 were on demand, 3 were downloaded, and then 15 are on iHeartRadio. Now, I don't use Spreaker for my media host. I use a company called Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N. And I found this particular episode, and I saw where it's been downloaded 140 times. And if you actually go into your Libsyn stats, I can see where some of these were on Stitcher for Android as well as Stitcher for iOS. So I put all that information into a spreadsheet. And so here you can see that this is why I always tell people that want to start a podcast, if they want to go live first, I'm like, you're doing a lot of extra work to podcast live for 2% of your audience. So live podcasting is about listening whenever you want to. Then 8% are on Stitcher. Now, for my other podcasts, I would say 10 to 15% of my listeners are on Stitcher. And uh, you can go over to Stitcher.com and become a partner. It's in the bottom right-hand corner. You can see 8% of this particular episode were listened to on iHeartRadio, and then 21% was consumed on the Spreaker platform. And then where I normally, my main website, what's tied on my main website, 61% uh, of this went to Libsyn. So that means all the iOS devices, iPad, listening on my website, things like that. All that, Libsyn is my main media host for this particular podcast. But nonetheless, you can see that 20% of people are on Spreaker. So when I looked at this particular episode again on Spreaker, I can see that of those 21%, 43% are consuming Spreaker on their website, 26% uh, on the iPhone, 13% on Facebook, which I find weird because I I know that's not from my Facebook, so I don't know if that's Spreaker's Facebook. Another 8% on Android, 6% uh, on other and 2% on iPad. So that's when we see that 21%. This is what makes up that 21%. Now you might think, great, I'm going to use uh, Spreaker as my media host. Well, or I want to add my shows to Spreaker. So let me show you the pros and cons of that. So here I have Ask the Podcast Coach is on iHeartRadio and Building a Better Dave is not. So here, if I go to that particular episode, you can see that here are my episodes. And down there, there is an RSS feed for so people can subscribe to my podcast. However, they're subscribing not to my episode here on my website where you can see here's my RSS feed. This is an RSS feed on the Spreaker site. So now Spreaker controls my RSS feed for their site. I'm not a huge fan of that. I would rather much rather have that point at my RSS feed so I'm in complete control of that. Now right now also if you use the RSS importing tool here again in January 2014, they kind of wipe out all your metadata in your audio files and they replace some things. Now, if you're going to use Spreaker as to host your media or to add them, what you want to do is come up and upload the file. I would not use their, their RSS feed importing tool at this point. They have said they're going to fix that. But the other thing I want to point out is if we go back to the show that I do have on iHeartRadio, 
that when you see that particular one down here, you'll see the RSS feed has been disabled. So iHeartRadio is the sole person or service that can use that RSS feed. So this is where you need your own RSS feed, like I have here, or the School of Podcasting, right? So here's my RSS feed here. So people can still subscribe to it. And then if I was going to use them as a media host, and, and for the record, they're not my number one choice. That would be Lipson and Blueberry because both those systems make it easy to leave them. But if I wanted to use them, here's the trick. When you go into a particular episode, let's go into uh, the one I just did today. You can... It looks like this is the download link, and this is actually the one you want. See down here in the bottom left-hand corner, that points at an MP3 file. If I go into Edit, it looks like this is the download link, but look down here. See how that is not... It, it would eventually go to the MP3 file, but I don't know that I would want to... If I was using the PowerPress plugin, and I would not want to use that link. I would go back to the one that goes directly to the MP3 file. So it's a little extra hurdle. You have to kind of pay attention to uh, what you're doing here when you're using Spreaker. But it's as a broadcasting platform, it's okay. I'm not a huge fan of their chat window. But obviously, they have a lot of people coming over here now to consume podcasts. And if you're going to use them, like I said, number one, realize that they're going to put an RSS feed on their website that you have no control over. And if you're using the RSS importer, as of right now, they kind of whack your metadata. But the thing I wanted to show you is that we can now gauge how many people are consuming the content on iHeartRadio. A couple of other quick stats I want to share with you. You can see why I have 3,000 people following me at Stitcher. And when I looked at how many people are actually downloading the show or listening to it, 55, that's only 2%. So having a lot of followers is not leading to lots of downloads in this point. And the other thing, I went over and looked at my stats overall for Ask the Podcast Coach Show, and I've had 255 listens, and 51 of those um, uh, and additional listens were on iHeartRadio. That constitutes to 17% of my audience, if we just use the Spreaker stats, would be on uh, iHeartRadio. You can see here in my Libsyn stats that I have 857 downloads of this new podcast. So let's throw that into the equation. When you throw that into the mix, you can see where only 4% of my audience is listening on iHeartRadio and 22% is on Spreaker. Now, if I dig into my Libsyn stats, I can dig out my Stitcher stats. So let's add that. So here in my Libsyn stats, I can see 26 on Android, 20 on iOS, so that would be a 46 total for Stitch. And with that precision, we now see that iHeart is getting 4%, uh, Spreaker, or I'm sorry, Stitcher is getting 4%, Spreaker is getting 22%, and Libsyn is my additional 70. Again, that's for my website, that's for everything else. So it's in an interesting uh, view, and this is of a brand new podcast. Like I said, normally my Stitcher stats are more closer to 10 to 15% of my audience. If you're thinking of starting a podcast, come over and visit me at schoolofpodcasting.com. You can click on the Join Now button and go through our self-paced tutorials as well as have me to support you. If you're looking for free podcast consulting, go over to Ask the Podcast Coach. More free podcast news, and you can call us every Saturday at 1030 Eastern Standard Time when we record that show live. Thank you for tuning in, and until we meet again, class is dismissed. I hope to see you on the inside at theschoolofpodcasting.com.